The legendary Darksaber as constructed by Tar Vizsla is by far and away the most unique blade in all of Star Wars canon lore. There are properties to the Darksaber that are unique only to it, exceptionally rare properties revolving around the wielder of the blade itself, the blade's functionality, its length, and design. Sometime back in the archives, we detailed the video on the history of the Darksaber and explored many of these properties. However, I believe that we missed out on one truly significant property that the Darksaber has in its corner something that makes the blade truly special. So today, students and acolytes of the Force, we must discuss the Darksaber and open up one of the rarest holocrons in all of Star Wars lore and attempt to explain exactly why the Darksaber has such an affinity with non-Force sensitives. In Star Wars canon, as well as Star Wars Legends, it is extremely difficult for a non-Force sensitive to wield the lightsaber, as this is something that is illustrated through several canon novels. In the Star Wars novel Aftermath Empire's End, this serves as a tool to aid the Jedi's focus, as it illustrates within the novel that the connection that a force wielder has to their blade is an extremely rare and important one, a process that allows the lightsaber and the lightsaber crystal to transform into something far more than a weapon. The novel says, quote, just as the Jedi are the lens that focuses the force, so is the kyber crystal a lens that focuses the light side inside of a Jedi, and the light side inside of the Jedi's weapon, the lightsaber. And it is this connection between the light side wielder and the light side artifact that is so strong, and why it is nearly impossible for a non-force sensitive to wield a lightsaber in combat successfully. Going back to the events of The Force Awakens, Finn actually wielded the lightsaber pretty proficiently against Kylo Ren during their battle on Starkiller base. However, as revealed in The Rise of Skywalker, Finn actually does hold a connection with the Force, which illustrates his competence with the weapon, despite only having fought with it one other time. Individuals who are fascinated with the lightsaber but hold no connection with the Force literally have gone as far as altering their very bodies in order to wield the weapons effectively. The most obvious and famous example is of course General Grievous. In canon, it was revealed that General Grievous had major contempt for the Jedi because he himself could not touch the Force. Submitting himself to the Sith in cybernetic enhancements, it literally took a partially cybernetic brain for General Grievous to be able to wield the lightsaber proficiently, and even then, he would never reach the levels of the higher master. In all of Star Wars canon, this seems to be a pretty common issue, and a common issue with every single lightsaber that we encounter, except for one. And that, my friends, is the Dark Saber itself. The Dark Saber in all of Star Wars lore has been wielded by the most non-Force sensitives. Of course, the Darksaber was constructed by a Force sensitive in the first ever Mandalorian Jedi that went by the name of Tar Vizsla, who would later go on to reunite Mandalore under this single blade. In the Star Wars book Secrets of the Jedi, it says this about wielding a lightsaber. It is said that wielding a lightsaber is less like swinging a sword and more like directing a current of power. When you're attuned to the Force, your thoughts and actions all become part of the same flow of energy which is then directed through the kyber crystal and into your lightsaber blade. So how exactly does this make the Darksaber unique? Well, for starters, the individuals that wield the Darksaber are the most proficient in all of Star Wars that do not hold a connection to the Force. Even Moff Gideon, who was not a Mandalorian, was pretty proficient with the blade. But of course, the best example, I believe, would be Pre Vizsla, the first individual we're introduced to wielding the ancient weapon. Pre Vizsla used this weapon with extreme accuracy and deadliness. He could absolutely eviscerate enemies wielding it, something that is incredibly difficult for non-force sensitives. But this is not where things get interesting. Later, when Sabine Wren becomes the owner of the Darksaber, the more her heightened emotional state becomes, the more the Darksaber actually reacts to her, crackling with electricity and flowing with more power. And then later, the very sentience of the Kyber Crystal rejects Din Djarin because Din Djarin rejects his role as the leader of Mandalore. And although he won the Darksaber in single combat, he he attempted to give the Darksaber away and reject his newfound role, something that the Darksaber found to be insulting. We addressed in our holocron several weeks ago that we believe that the Darksaber has more of a sentience to it than a normal lightsaber does. As stated, Kyber Crystals themselves have a connection to the Force and are essentially living beings in the Force itself. And because of this, although an individual wielding a lightsaber or a Kyber Crystal may not touch the Force, the Kyber Crystal itself very much can. We've seen before in Star Wars, 
kyber crystals potentially influencing the galaxy around them. In Rogue One, Jyn Erso has a kyber crystal that previously belonged to her mother. And in one particularly tense scene in Rogue One, before they're given authorization by the Imperials to enter their base, Jyn grasps the kyber crystal very closely to her heart, and they are then given clearance. Now, is this a stretch? Well, it very much could be. But it does illustrate that as Yoda states, the Force is something that surrounds and binds everybody. Every single living being in the Star Wars galaxy has some sort of connection with the Force. Their sensitivity in the Force, though, varies drastically, but make no mistake, the Force is around everyone, and everyone has the ability to at some point feel the Force in some way or another. Maybe not command or wield it, but feel it, certainly. But what makes the Darksaber very unique is it appears as if it can actually enhance one's connection to the Force momentarily, especially when wielding the Darksaber, thus leading to them being more proficient with the blade. Now this of course is admittedly conjecture and a theory, but it is extremely suspicious that of all the lightsabers in Star Wars, most of the non-Force sensitives are drawn towards the Darksaber, and not only this, appear to wield the Darksaber pretty proficiently. Again, as we illustrated earlier, it's extremely difficult for non-force sensitives to wield the lightsaber accurately at all. But when concerning the Darksaber, if you are aligned with its will, the Darksaber will respond to you, and I theorize that perhaps when wielding the Darksaber appropriately, one's connection to the Force itself is momentarily enhanced. The Darksaber itself and the crystal that lies within has a very strong connection to the Force, and we've seen before in Legends continuity that there are artifacts that can grant non-Force sensitives the ability to touch the Force freely. Now, I'm not insinuating that anyone that wields the Darksaber will instantly be able to force push someone or produce force lightning, but I do believe that this is a major reason why the Darksaber is wielded so often. And this is the only lightsaber in Star Wars canon that we've seen thus far with these feats. But now, my friends, I turn it over to you. What are your thoughts on this theory? Do you believe that the Darksaber itself has some form of sentience that could be a little bit deeper and more powerful than a normal living kyber crystal? Why do you think the Darksaber has so many unique properties to it? And will these secrets be revealed in the third season of The Mandalorian? As always, my friends, thank you so much for watching. May the Force be with you, and stay tuned later for our episode breakdowns and analysis on The Mandalorian Season 3 premiere.